This is a video about the Rev2 patch degrader. My name is John Keston. I'm the founder of Audio Cookbook. And I developed this Max for Live device in order to explore kind of experimental soundscapes using the Prophet Rev2. There's an amazing amount of parameters on this instrument. You've got the modulation matrix with eight slots, four LFOs, um, all the effects, uh, the auxiliary envelope. Um, that's a lot of different parameters to do with the oscillators and the filter and so on and so forth. And what I wanted to do was create a patch that, or create a device that I could use to morph these parameters over time or, or scale them over time um, in order to kind of explore algorithmic sort of soundscapes. And so, this is what I came up with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of the features of, this, of the software, and then we'll use it to manipulate some sound. And uh, afterwards, I'll, maybe I'll play some, through some examples of sounds that have been generated using this technique. All right, so right now I just have initialized a sound using the degrader. So there's a lot of different features that it does, including initializing. So I've just initialized this sound with a percussive attack. And the way that's done is through this section over here is pretty much where everything is. The patch looks fairly complicated, but it's not too bad to operate it. It is quite complicated under the hood, of course, but it's not that difficult to operate. Most of the operations are here on the left-hand side. Um, and the rest of it is just enabling or disabling very specific parameters. And this can be done um, with these buttons where I could enable or disable an entire section of things. For example, over here, enabling all the parameters within the, within the envelopes or disabling those. And what that does is disable the parameters so they're not part of the degrading process or not part of the initialization process. So uh, basically the reason why I have all these different kinds of ways of initializing the patch is because I want to start from different places in order to do the degrading. So right now, as I mentioned, I have this kind of percussive patch sound. So let's go ahead and try some degrading on that. So what does the degrading do? Well, down, down at the bottom here, you see this degrade is also interrupt. The degrade starts the process of degrading. And so this happens over time and we can play the patch over time. If we hear something we really like, we can interrupt the degrading process and then maybe store that as a patch or manipulate it um, by hand to get it to sound the way we want. So uh, right now we have milliseconds set to 344. And this means that's how long it will take to interpolate from one value to a new value. When, when a new parameter is selected and given a new value, it'll take 234 milliseconds to change that parameter and then it will change the next parameter. Um, but in this process, there ends up being a lot of parameters that are changed simultaneously. And so we end up with this really great way of kind of hearing things morph over time. Um, interpolation is what enables that. So if you want to, you can just disable interpolation and it will instantly jump to the new value. Looping um, is what makes it so that when the all of the parameters have been manipulated, it's possible to continue and re-manipulate all the same parameters again in a new order. So it'll create a new order and go through and manipulate those. Free versus sync just means we can time things based on the Ableton clock. So in other words, while it's synced, I can time this based on note values to the Ableton clock. Whereas when it's unsynced, it's free running and I can adjust it based on milliseconds from all the way down to 15, all the way up to 3000. And maybe what we'll do is we'll speed up the process a little bit this time. We'll go all the way to the 15 milliseconds, which is quite fast. Um, so you'll hear things radically change and perhaps even stop making sound immediately, but um, might come back again quickly too. So let's, let's hear what happens.
I've interrupted the degradation process at this stage. You can hear that this particular sound has a really long decay, so I can reduce that amount of decay, or, or release rather, um, if I wanted to make some fine adjustments here. So what else can we do here? Well, um, another thing that can happen is we could change the uh, randomize, keep the patch as it is, but we could also randomize the gated sequencer. So the gated sequencer can, all the parameters within the gated se sequencer can be randomized by choosing random gated sync, right down here, right, random gated seek rather, it's short for sequence. So choose that and press initialize. What that will do is, is randomize the gated sequencer. Now we can't hear it because we're in poly mode. So I'll switch to gated. So now we have a randomized gated sequencer applied to this patch. Now I could do it again by pressing initialize again. This one is not as audibly obvious, so I'll press it again. That one's a little bit more in between. Keep, keep going until we get something we really like. That one's quite a bit more obvious. Now, if I liked the uh, parameters that are being manipulated in the gated sequencer, I can look at those and see what they are. So we've got destination, uh, low pass filter release, um, oscillator shape, um, oscillator mix, and sequencer slew. So slew is being applied to the oscillator mix in this case. So I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with those destinations. I don't, maybe I don't want to change those destinations, but maybe I want to change the values in the sequencer itself, all of the uh, step values. So I could, I can randomize those by choosing the bottom option here under initialize, and that's randomize gate, gated sequencer steps. So once I choose that and hit initialize, now I'm changing those steps without changing the parameters, without changing the destinations. So when I decide that I like the steps that I have there, I can um, go ahead and move on to other things. So that's another uh, nice part about this tool is that I can you know, create different um, gated sequences this way. If I wanted to, I could choose all the destinations that I wanted specifically and then just randomize the uh, the steps instead of randomizing the destinations. All right, uh, why don't I share with you a few sounds that have been produced using this technique.